Hello, I'm Judy Woodruff. As a journalist, I have to count on sources that I know I can trust, particularly when the subject is as sensitive and as important as adoption. The Evan B. Donaldson Adoption Institute is a place that I have learned you can count on for information you can trust, reliable information. But you know, I'm also an adoptive mother myself, and so this is more than just a professional interest of mine. My husband and I have learned that when the facts about adoption are accurately presented, it makes a huge difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of children here in the United States and around the world. That's why the work of the Evan B. Donaldson Adoption Institute is so important. One of the most important things the Adoption Institute produced was the survey about attitudes relating to adoption. And I think this was eye-opening to realize how many Americans were affected by adoption. If you're not an adopted person yourself or your children aren't adopted, then probably somebody pretty close to you and your family is adopted. Our work with the Adoption Institute just opened our eyes to a lot of things we really hadn't thought about. What does it mean when you're asking a child to bring in a picture of them as an infant when they were adopted at five years old, and, and how does that leave the child feeling? It really got us thinking about how we talk about families. The media comes to the Adoption Institute first for information. It's known to be reliable. And this is part of the price we pay for opening it up? No. What this tells us is once it's open, we can see the problems and we can fix them. A report released today by an adoption advocacy group. There are two other federal laws that involve the adoption of children transracially. One governs the adoption of Native American children, and the other is the Hague Convention, which governs Americans adopting from other countries. We have found that the information available from the Institute because of their surveys, their research, their um, strong emphasis on academic integrity and relevance uh, is, is enormously helpful to us. We need to infuse real information into this debate if we are going to make really good decisions and therefore make really good law. The Institute, with its expertise in so many different areas, is in a unique position to change outcomes for children, to change outcomes for families. They've developed a number of different research reports, and in fact, I'm going to use the one that they recently developed on transracial adoptions as I prepare my testimony for the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Back in the 1960s, when I relinquished my firstborn child, as a birth mother, I had absolutely no power. I think the kind of environment that the Evan B. Donaldson birth parent study promotes is an environment where the birth parent, the adoptive parent, and the adoptive child have balanced rights, and that all the power isn't on one side or the other. And I think that's the real value of some of the work that the Donaldson Institute is doing. Adoption is full of this dialectical tension between loss and gain, nature and nurture, and it's not an either-or proposition. I am nature and I am nurture. I am the losses, which was a family that I was born into, and the gains of another family. That is the inherent nature of adoption, and it's very hard for us to put our minds around. Whenever there needs to be a sensible, rational, calm voice about what adoption is really like. I think we can rely on the Adoption Institute to provide that voice. When we do our work, a whole system changes, a whole law changes. Not just one life is improved, that's important, but potentially millions of lives are improved. That's a big mission, that's a big responsibility. I think we do it really well.